Put him on the line, a very quick hour than John Blewett. And number five is Gary Wright and Colin Blackford. So we watch to see the start of the second of the sidecars. Race six in your programme. We're already underway. All sorts of problems for Neville Penfold on the line. But it's Alan and John Blewett that have got away. With the new short jump with the minor Matthew Stover on the outside. to the front as they go into that pit bend for the first time. Ivan Matthews sees him come through, tries to tuck in underneath on the exit of the bend. A great scrap this one between these two outfits. Resume for them. In the front, Ivan Matthews. to get away from him. As you watch the scene across that bottom bend, again Ivan Matthews trying for that inside line. Roger Meacher keeps the power on, he's got a brilliant loading line into this top corner.
we've, we've mentioned so many events this afternoon that uh, when we say that we're at the peak of grass track at this time of the year, I think you can only agree with us. And the reason why grass track is becoming so popular, races like you've just seen, and I think races like you're about to see. This looks to be a tremendous sidecar final. Remember, it is six laps. I know we spoke to one or two of the drivers just now. Tires. We've seen lots of people suffer with tires this afternoon. And as we get underway, here's Ivan Matthews that's going. Ivan Matthews goes straight in the first corner. Steve Smith going in the second place. Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones leading. Russell now goes through in the second. He comes through underneath Steve Smith. Looking again, Ivan Matthews, and he comes down this straight. But Steve Smith. I do think that we're going to see a lot of those riders that will perform in that British final here this afternoon in action. Because when we look at the lineup for race 35, it includes Paul Hurry, unbeaten to get into this final. He's number 86. Dave Mears, 139. Roy Sizemore, 231. Dave Homer, 17. Richard Musson, 12. Mitchell God, 9. Mark Giles, 26. Jonathan Duke, 25. Pete Fox 175, Ricky Scarborough 127, Alan Harper 121 and John Dormer 76. By the way we go down with the 350 final, race 35 is going to be a tremendous start. He lived going into that first bend but he's now got the rest of the field catching him up. As indeed Keith Potts breaks coming out of that top bend, goes down the back straight with Dave Mears after him. Well, Richard Musson is now moving through and Paul Hurries appeared from 6th place up to 4th going into that bend. Drive hard, locks it up in the middle of the bend. Pete Potts then leading as he comes up. And he's got to on the inside of Dave Mears. Paul Hurry is trying to follow him. He also goes to on the inside of Dave Mears. So Paul Hurry up in the third, but look what's happening at the front. Richard Musson goes after Keith Potts, leading. Of course, Keith Potts so successful in this part of the country on a 350. He knows he's got a fight on his hands today, and it's Richard Musson. As Richard Musson goes very, very wide, almost touches the board. Paul Hurry is floating up on them as well. Oh, Richard Musson looks for an outside line this time. He's gone very, very wide on that top end. He connects with the boards once again. That slowed him up. It means that Paul Hurry is now going to take up the challenge. And he closes right up on Keith Potts as Keith Potts almost gets it wrong. Well, Paul Hurry closes up as they go into the last lap. He drives hard. He's done a lot of work on this circuit, Keith Potts. He'd love to win this one against such strong competition. But Paul Hurry has got different ideas. And there goes Hurry through on the inside. Paul Hurry has been quick round this pit then. I don't think Keith Potts is going to be able to get back underneath him. And Paul Hurry really does look to be in great form on a 350. It's a tremendous ride for Paul Hurry. He crosses the line in first place. A good ride from Keith Potts. He fought off no more than four challenges there to actually end up in second place. Dave Mears, a very creditable third spot. And Richard Mustin, after what was two mistakes, we saw him hit the board this side, he then hit the boards on the far side. He's ended up back in, I believe, fourth spot. But what a result for Paul Hurry. You can see that Steve Schofield has decided because he would have had an early pick. He's come on the outside about third in. You might be able to see if you're down near this start line. What we see what happens. Paul Hurry, of course, has had the 3.50 final already. Love to do the double header, I'm sure. As we get them underway, the group clean start. Gone with him though, it's those two to get the front and Tatum goes down. Oh, and you can see that we've got a red flag in the interest of safety. The riders will be brought to a hold. Steve Schofield got through that okay, Paul Hurry got through that okay, but we did lose a lot of riders on that first bend. I'm pleased to see that most of them look to be up and okay. It certainly was Kelvin Tatum, the first rider that dropped it going into the bend. The rest of the riders I've not been able to pick out so far. 
anybody misses this crew, then uh, you must be colour blind because they've got every colour under the rainbow all over their leathers. Outfit number six is rustling and andying. Yeah. Andy stepping in today in place of the injured Paul Urich. They're in a the very distinctive mauve and pink leathers. As they get underway from that start line on the far side, it's rustling that's made a good start. Roger Misa coming through on the inside, although it goes into that first corner in first place. Ivan Matthews is right up there now with Russelling. Russelling drives in hard underneath Roger Misa. Ivan Matthews has gone incredibly tight. Oh, to the front. I can see that Neville Penfold has moved through into fourth place, but Russell now challenging for the first place. Well, he's just letting Roger Mesa know that he's there, and Roger responds straight away and pulls away from him. Ivor Matthews up into third place, but Russelling looks to have found another gear, and Ivor Matthews goes through on the inside of him. Well, they got incredibly tight on Russelling to contend with, he's got Ivor Matthews there as well. All three of those outfits together as they go into that pit bend. A cracking final for this big A sidecar final, but Roger Misa is not getting it all his own way. Ivor Matthews is right up there with him and we know that he can pull it tight in this bottom bend. Roger knows that as well and you can see he's written a brilliant bend. Russelling still hasn't given up. He's still right there in contention. Tries to get that second place back again, but Roger Misa has fought them off. What's going to happen on this last bend? Ivan Matthews, we know, has been brilliant on this top bend this afternoon. He'll be looking for a way through. He'll let Roger know that he's there, and then he'll drive through on the inside, and is he going to do it? He's looking for that inside. Brilliant final. Well, an absolutely tremendous 1,000cc sidecar race. What a way for the sidecar competition to finish. Well, now on the right-hand sidecar start, we get uh, no Colin Hutchins and on starter. But we get 28, Darren Bartholomew and Matthew Dix, 32. Right? They're underway already. Richard Brown and Ian Aram has gone down to the first turn first, followed by Darren Bartholomew and Matthew Dix, and then the all-girl crew of Penny Hook and Shane McLaren. Then... Kevin Simmons and Mark Langraven, they spin right round, almost come to a stop there. They have come to a stop there. Not sure they'll continue or they're going to pull off the centre green. Meanwhile, number 38 then, Richard Brown and Ian Aram in the lead from Darren Bartholomew and Matthew Dix and then Penny Hook and Jane McLaren. The all-girl crew in third place. And over goes Richard Brown, and that's bad news for him. The all-girl crew moving up into second place. And uh, no red flag yet, so the race continuing. No, the red flag has now gone up. The red flag has now gone up. This is a big one then for the left-hand sidecar fraternity here this afternoon. Their last race of the afternoon. Who's it going to be? Obviously their favourite must be the maximum man. Bill Van Fold with Nigel Shaw, but can one of those others depose him here this afternoon? On his own head shore. Well, there they go. Flat out is Bill Van Fold that gets the best of the start with Terry Patchell in hot pursuit. So Bill Van Fold and Nigel Shaw set their sights around that first turn. Terry Patchell, Dominic Doyle in hot pursuit in second place. And then 108, Bob Miles and Kev Bovis. And then Chris Berwick and Ken Jarvis with John Arnott and Russell Steele. Right and Graham Hill and Colin Goodwin bringing up the rear. Oh, Bill Penfold looks like he's got it all his own way. He's several yards clear already on the Godden V-Twin as he charges it up that hill. The elastic power of that V-Twin charging up the hill now. Bill Penfold and Nigel Shaw from Terry Patchell. And Dominic Doyle. And then the 108. Oh, yeah, over, go two outfits. John Arnott's gone over with Chris Berwick. Red flags are up and the race is being stopped. The race being stopped in the interest of safety. Let's hope there's nothing too wrong. I see John Arnott is already up on his feet. And he and Chris Berwick took a very... Uh, very nasty looking little tumble there. So as the tapes drop, Ken Lane lifting up at the start, which gives Pete Dyer a chance 
Pete Dyer's on the inside. Ken Lane back in fourth place. Dave Penfold is in second. Boy Spreadbury, oh, there's bike, oh dear. Very unfortunate there. Very, very close. Thankfully, they look to be okay. Well, away we go then with the restart of race five. We're anxiously looking across that far side for Graham Thomas, of course. And as they go into that first bend, it is indeed Thomas has got to the front. Going around very, very wide, but he flicks it inside. Mike Appleton has gone after him in second place. Right number one, two, four. Oh, that of course is Keith Strudwick who came in. Wow. None of our top point scorers go in this first ride, so a chance for other riders to get themselves up onto the top point scorer board. Race 21 promises to be an interesting one, as indeed does race 22. But as we get underway, it looks to me like Tom Ledford has made a brilliant start on the far side. Oh, tremendous to see Tom competing in this. He's doing very, very well in pre-75 races, of course, but great to see he's got out there and had a go. And, uh, Dave Payne is the rider that's gone to the front now as they come round off that bottom corner, number 199, but Tom Ledbetter still right there with him. Oh, and he goes, Dave Payne goes very, very wide on that top corner. Oh, Dave Payne has lost down that bottom bend, we're looking for the rest of the riders to come through. Number 29 in that very distinctive pink helmet. Is Bill Bourne. I'm looking to see who that is on the inside. Peter Lloyd is right out there with him. He's up down to the And he's trying to take over the lead, taking Peter Lloyd with him. Tom Ledbetter back into third place. Bill Bourne still there in fourth. But Peter Lloyd, who disastrously didn't get any points first time out, drives hard on the inside. Oh, the checkered flag goes for Steve Garner. Winning the final. It's uh, 
something that is of course in any racing person's head that you want to go out on a winning note everybody would love to win this final here this afternoon even if they don't win the overall competition because that also goes down in the record books Luke Patu has had a very good day so far this afternoon one disastrous ride where he lost that chain that of course has put him right down in the points but he's now going to show us what he's capable of Bill Pinkford goes after him I would expect John Fitch to just ride a very sensible ride John Fish in third place at the moment, number 173. He's got a six-point margin on anybody else that's out there in this final. So he'll probably let those two scrap it out in front of him. So it could be a good scrap between these two because Bill Penfold is on 15 points. He's sitting there in second place, or is he? He's now going for first place. He gets the first place. Right, okay. Prattle goes to first place on that bottom bend. Well, John Fish, I'm sure, is content to sit there in third at the moment and watch what's going on in front of him. He doesn't want to get involved in any of the tangles at the front because those two are certainly having a great race. Bill Penfold has got to the front once again. Lou Prattle turns in hard and tries to get to on the inside. Oh, John Fish, still looking over his shoulder. He knows his other riders should be closing on him. Well, this time goes to on the pit bend. So, the top corner proves to be Bill Penfold and the bottom corner proves to be Luke Patchell. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, it does look to me as if John Fish may have problems. I keep saying that he's got a six-point margin, so he's probably mathematically working it out. I wonder if he has realised that he's made a six-point final. I had to do a moment ago, but... <laughs> Well, there's still a good scrap going on between Luke Packer and Luke has gone right up against the ropes. Well, Bill Penfold, I think, got a problem coming in the pit bend. He's now got himself back to the front, but with all those problems that Luke had on the far side, it now means that number 188, Jerry Packer, gets involved. Golly Penfold has now come through. Well, we're all strictly trying to work out the points here because uh, if you can see there is obviously some sort of problem for John Fish. But if we quickly add the points up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six place now. The checkered flag will go for Bill Fishbold. He takes the final from Luke Patchell. Number 188 takes third place, Terry Patchell. Fourth place is Tommy Fishbold. Fifth place is Philip Davis. And sixth place number 173, John Fish. So race 13 is underway. See who comes to the fore in this one. Looks like Tom Ledbit are getting a very good start there. Being taken now by... with a win last time unfortunately he's uh, got engine problems and has pulled out but uh, up at the front we looks so, though number 19 number 1 seven, number 10 number 19 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 number do a wheelie and let the second man in. Steve Dorr taking it back. Seventy-one. Check it. Flag being readied now, so it's uh, off this corner counts. In a big way, this is uh, number John Wheatley takes the win, 710. It's the score. 36 is Sean Wilson. 12, 2. And 110. Followed home there by 71. quite see whether the tapes have gone but they're very close to it must be they are away so we're into race 18 Ken Lane so Neville Penfold comes underneath 
eight into the lead, number 20, Colin Hudson in second, Ken Lane, number seven in third, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman in fourth, off this pit corner, number 21, that's Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Ken Lane in second, number seven, number 20, number 149, number 12. Got a problem there with uh, Foreman, so because uh, they've uh, got a curling problem. Up at the front, Neville Penfold, number 21, who's been chased now by Ken Lane, number 20, number 7, number 20, Colin Hutton in third, Tim Bennett, number 12, number 55, Jerry Adams in, in fifth there. Let's see whether Ken Lane can get in touch with uh, Neville Penfold, both Neville and Ken going well this year. Number 20, Colin Hutton in third, number 12, Tim Bennett, 55, going through in fifth place. Ken Lane coming on the wide, on the inside, in, oops! But Ken's gone, uh, Ken's gone, it's okay, it's, uh, it was a slow speed one, that, relatively speaking, thank goodness. Number 21, Neville Penfold, comes over the line to take the chequered flag. 20 in second, number 12 in third, number 55 in uh, in fourth place there. Let's hope that Ken and Mark aren't too badly injured. It looked as though they'd actually slowed the bike down quite a lot by the time they actually flipped. Oh, we're underway. First semi-final of the 1000 CC chair. Steve Smith, Tim Bennett, Dave Steer, Rob Wilson. Change there in uh, fourth and fifth, sweep, sw switch over. But up at the front, Gary Jackson's taking out a fairly commanding lead. Neville Penfold in second, Steve Smith in third, Dave Steer in fourth. Tim Bennett looking down. Rob Wilson, uh, number 24, in the sixth place in the front. We really have a, a runaway winner at the moment there, Gary Jackson. What the distance between him and Neville Penfold. Neville Penfold, Steve Smith going through. Dave Steer, 17. Jackson, number 23, coming off the pit corner, and Steve Smith's gone. Steve Smith and Keith Wall have just gone. That was uh, not good, that one, unfortunately. But, uh, red goes on. The red flag is raised, the red flag is raised, the race has been stopped in the interest of safety. So we must be about ready. The tapes go. And the second semi finals underway with uh, Alan and Conway. Sorry, now it's Russell Ling in second. Roger Meester in third. Wrestling has been pushed very hard by Roger Misa and the fifth, fifth man's been pushed by the sixth. Gently around that corner, they come in and wrestle. Alan and John Blewett. Alan and 
John Blewett still holding that first place, Roger Meese is tussling and uh, Gurren nipping the heels as it were. Roger Meese are going on the outside, bit of, a, bit of a thump there, but he's come through, Roger Meese has come through in the first place. Alan Blewett into second, Gurren tussling in third, Jerry Adams in fourth, number 20, Colin Hutton in fifth and uh, Ruiz Burns in sixth.